Free Golden Eagles for War Thunder. Download the app in the description below. Hey guys, welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to another tournament video. But today I'm letting you in on a little bit of a secret. You see, I've played a lot of tournaments over the past three or four months, mainly air battles, mainly these, you know, 1v1 air battle videos like I've described with the P63A5 that you watched probably last week. And the reason I've started doing them is not just because I wanted to get the titles, um, I'm not in it for the free Golden Eagles or the uh, um, the rewards with, with premium time, but if you get top five, I recently realized this, top five um, always get a 50% RP and a 50% silver line booster. And with a lot of these tournaments, they're relatively empty. So if you apply for them, it can happen that you have to play a single match, and it doesn't even matter if you win or lose, you get the booster regardless. So I started playing a lot of these. And just kind of practicing, really, because I figured, you know, it's like riding a bike. When, when you're a kid, and you're small, and you sit on that bike, and you've got those, those assist wheels, you know, it, it's easy, but then you take those wheels off and you start falling left, right, center. It takes practice to learn it. It's almost like muscle memory with control setups and whatnot. And I, I've even been playing arcade tournaments, uh, which I found hilarious because it takes a completely different approach to it. And I even had to configure my settings in a different way to use rudder sending abilities. Now, today for you, I've got a T44 tournament, one match. We're just going to look at one match example against uh, Lelic789, uh, a person I have fought before, but actually in a plane. So this is an interesting example because we're using a tank that I really like, T44. I want to make a review on this very, very soon. Um, and I'm fighting against a player who I have fought against before, who I've defeated before, but not on equal terms. It wasn't, it wasn't the same vehicle. It wasn't the same meta. It wasn't the same matchmaker. And because of that, I don't really know what to expect. So, overall coverage of what tank battles are like here. It's not the same as aircraft. There's no best of three, right? In aircraft, you know, you go into a, you go into a duel, and it's like one match consists of best of three rounds. So, in theory, in aircraft, you could play up to like 10, 15 missions if you, you know, kept ramming each other. In tanks, it's only one match. It works the exact same way that your ground battles and realistic work, except that there's only one player per team, and there's no, um, you know, there's no lineup, there's only one vehicle, you can respawn it in endless amount of times, uh, there's no silver line cost, but there is also a spotting system. Now this spotting system is something that people ask a lot, why is it there? Now for me, you know, the answer is quite simple. I think the reason why the spotting system is there is to make it a bit easier to have a feeling of where the enemy is coming from and to perhaps prevent players who are unfamiliar with these duels to like just flank the entire map because that would be a really annoying experience. You know, like I would drive into the capture point, sit there for 15 minutes with nobody anywhere close and then suddenly a tank comes from behind me. It would make it a bit annoying, but uh, would it make a big of a difference in the gameplay style? Probably not. It is something though to keep in mind because you might get confused if you're coming from realistic ground battles, you know, expecting to just see a tank pop up somewhere and here you suddenly have this, you know, big red name that appears above it. Now the map is something I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with. This is the single cap on Advance of the Rhine. Alpha is in the uh, kind of the park section of um, of the well the city that is based off Cologne. It's not one of my favorite maps. Now it's nice because it's straight, level ground, meaning we don't have to worry about our gun depression because it is a Russian tank. What I do have to worry about is obviously the optics and grass and your queue because these little hill sections have a lot of grass over them. And when this kind of detailed 1v1 shootouts are going to begin, I'm going to be in, you know, in a bit of a disadvantage, really. So it's because of that I feel a little bit repelled from playing on this map. Now, the approach I take is straight for the capture point, aggressive, and it was a mistake. Because what the guy did was he went down the middle of the map, he flanked me, and I get taken out by a quick rapid shot to the turret. Also, to, you know, give a bit of an overview here, um, there is no tanking really involved. Very rarely can you survive duels by tanking damage, unless you can nullify any damage being taken. So to force the enemy into bouncing shots, to force the enemy into taking shots where they don't do any damage, yes, you can invigorate yourself infinitely. But if you do get shot and get your cannon breach taken out, you know, you're not going to have time to sit there and repair because he can just simply drive around you and take you out. So... As we said, it's not realistic battles in air, which means we can just keep on respawning. So I'm never, you know, it's never game over, like immediately. There's always another spawn he can do. There's always, you know, the capture point he can return back to. 
But this will be a disadvantage because as he is in the capture point now, and he is going to capture it indefinitely, I can't get there in time, uh, this gives him a ticket advantage. Now, the map lasts for about 15 minutes, I believe, and that means that I have 15 minutes of the ticket bleed, which could take less, I'm going to guess about seven and a half, to, well, eliminate him and retake the capture point and then hold the capture point. So it's, it's not just about eliminating the enemy tank, it's about holding that position very, very strongly. So my thought process as an aggressive player was, let's try to push him out of the capture point, so I went straight in and I got myself served with a beautiful shot trap right there. If you don't know what a shot trap is, quick little tip, shooting the shell on the majority of Russian tanks just between the seam of the turret and the fuselage. What happens is the shell kind of changes direction between a, you know, kind of horizontal approach to a vertical one. It goes 45 degrees into the hull, and because the top of the hull is very weak, very thin, uh, it very commonly, if you shot trap, you're usually one shot in the tank. It's a very effective way to eliminate Russian tanks, albeit it will take a lot of practice and uh, quite a few matches to obviously perform this over and over again to get it down into your muscle memory. So that's two spawns out of the question, and this was happening during a stream. And the thing I want to mention is I want to mention the phenomena of the backseat gamer. These are players that watch streams, they watch YouTube videos, and they pinpoint every mistake you make along your way. It's something that especially your streamers, find extremely annoying because you're sitting there in front of maybe like 300 viewers and then there's somebody who's saying that you're doing it wrong, that if you flanked here or if you shot there, you know, it would have been different. Obviously, they would have done better in your position, but they themselves don't play in tournaments and don't have any accurate experience. It's not a very nice phenomenon to deal with. So re-engagement, I do the exact same thing as the first time. I was getting a little bit triggered by the people in chat and I thought, I'll prove you wrong, I'll do it better. What I'm doing is I'm using this wreck of a tiger to kind of position myself in a way where I don't expose my turret. The only real weak spot of the T-44 against a T-44 is the turret armor, along with the sides if you are to over-angle. I'm not sure if he can penetrate the lower glazes, but he definitely can't go through the upper hole. So I'm very, very safe as long as I keep that turret in place. Now what he did is he hide behind the turret of the Panther F. Which is a great thing to do, unfortunately it forces him to move out of the actual capture point so I can now cap it. And then, to make things worse for me, I get set on fire by his artillery strike. But what's good is that I forced him into a pain point position, and I also called artillery in. You see, if you look at where he's standing, he has two things he can do. He can back up and not get killed by artillery, but that means I'll shoot him in the engine by immobilizing him. If he drives too far forward, he's risking of getting hit by artillery because that's exactly where I dropped it. So playing with this artillery strike and using different wrecks of tanks or, you know, indestructible objects in general, um, you can, you know, kind of force the enemy into a position where you can kind of... It's like playing chess almost in a lot of ways. You know, when you drop artillery, artillery doesn't move after you've dropped it, so you have to be very careful when you drop it. Now, if you're dropping it from across the map, which is actually a usable thing sometimes, the artillery will disperse over a larger segment of space. If you're very close to the enemy tank, then the artillery is going to be very, very pinpointed. So you have to make sure that pinpoint is precisely where you want it to be, or it has to be somewhere where you can force the enemy tank into driving into. Obviously, at the end of the day, artillery is still a little bit of a... I call it healthy RNG. Uh, it's not massively useful in these duels, but it can come extremely handy. And this is where the backseat gamer returns, because instead of me staying in the capture point, I decide to drive out of it. And the reason for this is because I'm streaming, and because I hate standing in the same spot for more than a minute. I don't know about most of you, but I hate sitting in, in the same spot. I hate, like, this idea of, let's say, having a Ferdinand on the back of the map waiting for things to drive by, or a Hellcat hiding behind a building. I hate the idea of playing the ambush. I like playing the aggressive pusher that relies on reaction shooting, that relies on quickly finding the weak spot, that relies on, uh, you know, just action, I think. And it, it's, it's a lot more enjoyable for both me because it's, you know, it's adrenaline rush, it's exhilarating, and also it must be more exciting for the viewer to watch this because something's actually happening and it's not just waiting for five minutes for the enemy to drive by. And this is where I'm assuming he can't take a shot on me, I back up a little bit too much, and I get exquisitely executed through the cupola. Something I didn't think he could do. I was a bit amazed by it, I was a bit annoyed by it, I'm 100% certain he was using binoculars there. Hats off, that shot was just absolutely amazing. And this is something that you don't experience in random matches, not very often, because, you know, in random matches you have the option of shooting virtually anywhere else. 
In a random match, that person would be maybe playing a, a Tiger 2P, he would shoot anywhere in the vicinity of the turret, and he would have just blown me up. But because he's in the same tank, same rules apply, you know, to both weak spots and strengths. He has to go for specific ones, and that turret shot was very, very nasty. And this is where I think I was probably like, you know, leaning towards 55%, uh, I'm gonna lose this game. And if I lose this game, this was the first match of the tournament I played, it wouldn't be the best way to do it, you know. It's, it's never fun getting taken out the very first match you play. So, same approach as we did last time, because it worked. If it worked once, I don't see why it wouldn't work again. Um, as long as we don't make another mistake, is pushing straight back into the capture point. Because I knew due to the time restraints and the ticket bleed, if I took too much time and eventually did actually take him out, what can happen is sometimes is you win on kills, but you'll lose on the cap. I push straight in, I make the perfect shot in my eyes, but it was a little bit too much to the right. This turret of the T-44 can be very derpy. You need to really assess where you're shooting. You either go for the right, kind of, the height of the middle, to go through, or you want to go for the bottom end to go for the shot trap. I was shooting too far up and too far right, so I kind of bounced the shell of the uh, of the right hand side. Nasty, and at this point, I've almost given up. Because, you know, that was the point. I'm just going to throw another kill. I figured, you know, it's on stream, might as well get some action out there. Um, but how can you really win? And then I look at the mini map, and you can see that he's always backing up. And I can see he's doing the exact same thing he did during that match when he sat behind the Panther turret. I think I can use that into my advantage. For once, I can use that to kind of force them all out of the cap, to kind of drive in there and then just camp it. Because at this point, the only thing I can see working is the ticket bleeds. I'm not gonna win on kills, I gotta force that ticket bleed in. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a 1v1 with the same vehicle. So weak spots are always going to be specific. It's not the same as fighting a, a King Tiger, because a King Tiger could go, let's say, through a lower plate. There's a trick to the T-44 that I've learned through playing some of the, the random matches, but I'm gonna use here. First of all, look at that, aggressive push, forcing him to miss, giving me the option to drive straight into the capture point. A risk I was willing to take, and that risk might have just won us the game here. It's called turret angling. If the turret is the main weak spot, then I should be able to prevent the enemy from killing me by making sure the turret is always in an angle to his tank that he simply can't pen. And I wanted to see if I could play this game with him. If I could play a game where I don't take a single shot, but instead he takes all the shots, he does all the work, and he misses all the shots. It's a it's a passive gameplay style. It's something that I would use in a in a Yak Tiger or in a mouse to, you know, obviously collect a lot of points by collecting damage, or rather reflecting damage, instead of doing all the work trying to shoot him. Now, if we assess his position on the map there, I have no idea how I can shoot him, because he's behind a hill, and the hill has grass over it. I don't know where the grass ends, where the hill begins. Now, I'm, I'm confident he's using no grass in optics, so he can kind of see me where I can't really see him. At this advantage, I'm willing to take. Uh, the Panther turret, by the way, yeah, I just see now it's not a Panther F turret, it's a Panther A turret. I do apologize for that. I know some historical buff somewhere in the comment section is going full keyboard warrior right now, reading there. Um, you can chill out. The thing that this turret does allow me to do is there's a bit of a glitch with these... The hitboxes of dead vehicles on the map are not very accurate. So he might try to shoot through that little hole that does still show my turret, and you see there he can't reliably pen me because I'm angling the turret by just a slightest amount. And I'm always moving back and forth and back and forth, and I'm using the capture point to replenish some of my ammunition. I can do this indefinitely. And he knows this. He knows that I can continue doing this, and if I keep this on for long enough, I'm going to win because I've got the ticket advantage. So he has to figure out something else. It doesn't work on one direction, so he's gonna try the other one. He's, you know, he's gonna simply flank around me. So immediately start adjusting, and I was not fast enough. He simply is quicker. Now, I had the turret here to work with. Now, I'm gonna have to work with the hill. And this is where his advantage starts to take over. I can't see him, he can see me. I was starting to panic. Now, the only way I can see actually winning this is by doing some damage to him before he does damage to me. And I, it was it was a far-fetched dream. I take another shot, I miss, and he hits my cannon breach. It's over. I mean, I can't win, right? Remember what I said about the turret angling and about not leaving the capture point. If he can't kill me or push me out of the capture point, I win. So what I do is I look at his cannon barrel and I'm directing my turret at a perfect 45 degrees at all times, physically making it impossible for him to kill me. He can keep on shooting, but I'm just gonna push straight into him. And this is important. 
I don't want to have separation. I want to make sure that my tank is about as glued to his as possible. He can shoot my barrel, he can shoot my cannon breach, and he can try to shoot my cupola. This is where he tried to make a run for it, tries to go for the cap. I push him out of the way, and it's beyond obvious that all he wants to do is get into the cap right now and then, you know, push me out of it. So I go straight in with him because if he caps, it's game over for me 100%. The only way I can still win this is by making sure he literally runs out of ammunition. And I can do that by just making sure that whatever amount of shells he has, and I'm going to guess he doesn't have more than 15 left, i got to deflect all of them. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of game of, of chance here, but if I keep on angling my turret and hugging his tank, there's physically no way that I can lose this, but chances of doing that perfectly obviously are a little bit slim. I keep on pushing him, I keep trying to be annoying, and I keep looking at where his barrel is angling. I'm thinking, what is he aiming for? How can I neglect his damage? The only way he can win right now for me would be to either track me, flank me, or go for that cupola shot again. But he was determined to go for the breach. He was determined to go for that killing shot on the crew members. So again, 45 degree angle at all times on that barrel. Hug the enemy tank as much as I can and keep angling the turret no matter what. Never give him a 90 degree shot, because if that happens, I will be taken out. This is where I make my lethal mistake by getting my engine blown out, and I was 100% certain this is game over. He goes for the flank around, and little did I know, he has one shell remaining. And that one last shell got deflected by my cannon barrel. I honestly don't know what the odds of this happening are. I don't know if this is down to skill, bad luck, coincidence, RNG, or just, you know, a great big power coming from Gaijilla themselves. Maybe it's streamer favoritism, but this is what makes tournaments playing fun for me. It's matches like these, winning without actually doing much damage, being the, the worst of the two players, but coming out on top somehow, because um, you know how the overmatch angling on T44 works. And, you know, that you can do this in any tank in the game, virtually. As long as you have some armor to work with, uh, this is explicitly usable in German tanks. Uh, a lot of Russian tanks also do it. And this last finishing blow into the side of his tank was probably the best feeling I've had playing tanks in the past few months. Now, to answer this question, which somebody's going to point out, shouldn't he have bailed out and respawned? Shouldn't, you know, he have done something else to win? Uh, the time ran out. I won this duel before I even capped to the point, and so even if he did bail out, he would have had to bail out a good seven shots before to be able to have enough time to come back. And if he did that, then he would have probably lost some tickets. So um, it was it was an all-in scenario. You know, those of you who play poker probably very familiar with the term. We both went all in. We gave it our best, and uh, it was the combination of the timer and obviously the ticket bleed from before that uh, led to me winning. And with that said, I'm still doing the 1v1 Realistic Battle tournaments. Uh, I play these during the weekends, usually all three of them. I like to stream quite a few of those. And what I'm also doing, and what I have been doing for a bit, is playing the arcade tournaments in 1v1s. It's not because I want the free rewards, albeit that's a nice treat with it. It's because the, the way these duels are taking part, and the controls you require for them, is a completely different meta. And I kind of like it. It's a combination of this fast-paced, fast reaction, and there's a lot of salt in them. So it's amusing to watch. It's sel seldom amusing and quite a bit frustrating to play, but I'm, I'm condemned to learn it. And so if you want to see some arcade tournaments on the stream with some in-depth salt definition review, give me a forehead arcade in chat. Cheers, lads.